this is Donna with the Folk Voice Podcast. And today, I'm going to speak to all voters about being confident. You know, with the pandemic and with the way things have been, we have a tendency to get a little down. So I thought I'd shake it up a bit today, especially with all the information about voter suppression bills in the state of Michigan. Go to the Vote Voice YouTube page and there's a Vote Voice video update about the voter suppression laws. So I thought today we would take just a little break from voter suppression (laughs) and just a little break. We have our uh, primary elections coming up on August 3rd. And I just thought it would be nice to just do something different. Now you can follow us on Facebook. We're um, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Twitter. I'm sorry. Instagram. Um, of course, we're on Anchor, and we're also on Breaker, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Overcast, Pocket Cast. Radio Public and Spotify and I'm so grateful to Anchor for allowing me to have this podcast and they've made it very easy for me to do so so I'm very appreciative of that you can go to www.votevoice.com and pretty soon we'll be uh, we'll have a updated webpage and that's still in the works so I just need you guys to be patient. We'll get that done. Today, I just want to, you know, let you guys know that everyone desires to be confident, yet very few have been able to develop it in all facets of their life. And a lack of self-confidence can ultimately become the most sufficient, a significant hindrance to finding happiness success and fulfillment unfortunately too many people often are are unable to see the effects low self-confidence has on their lives blaming their failures on outside factors instead they blame a tough dating scene for not finding the right partner they're desperate to find a better job but don't know where to start because the job market is so competitive They wish they could follow their dreams, but can't afford to fail. On the surface, these kinds of excuses seem like they are legitimate outside barriers, keeping us from finding true happiness. However, when further examined, the justifications are all rooted in a lack of self-confidence. Past experiences have helped to develop your current mindset, and the past unknowingly plagues us as we grow into adults. As adults, we often waste a ton of energy attempting to appear confident rather than developing real confidence. The important society puts on outside appearances only reinforces the pressure to show false confidence. This is just intensified with the popularity of reality television and social media. It has become the norm for our society to appear one way to everyone else rather than focusing on making the changes internally that will allow us to alter our sense of self. For example, many people will post uh, photoshopped images to their social media profiles in the hope of garnering a ton of likes to help increase their shaky self-esteem. Hence, the facade of confidence trumps genuine, unwavering uh, confidence. So many people are afraid to admit they lack confidence because it seems as a personal weakness, while others wish they could have more confidence but don't know where to start. If you lack, if you suffer from a lack of confidence, it will continue to hold you back. Even if you become 
adept at faking it. Now, the great news is you can be one of the few people that learn how to build an undeniable, persistent, and genuine level of confidence that won't be affected by outside circumstances. Now, we're going to talk about that we're, as we spend time in this podcast because it's going to take several We're going to have tips and strategies to develop confidence in all areas of your life. And as I'm speaking to you, not only am I helping you, but I'm helping myself too. You know, Prince Harry said that he found that when he was helping others, he had helped himself. During this pandemic, you know, I've mostly been inside and we can go out a little bit, but now it seems that we have the variant around. So... We're not sure exactly what's going to happen. I just hope that we'll be able to fight off the variant. Now, as I'm speaking about confidence in the next few podcasts, you will also learn the ways you can develop a strong sense of self and unconditional self-love to get you through any challenges, challenges that you might face in your life. The only difference between those who are successful and those who fail in life is the willingness to keep trying. Listen, I don't want you to give up. I know that it's difficult. I know that life has changed as we know it. And for those of us who are fighting for democracy and fighting for the right to vote, I know that it is difficult for us to keep going because we're tired. And so much is going on, okay? But we have to keep going, even if it's just a handful of us right now, because everyone is so exhausted. We could just help each other to the best of our ability. And we must keep going. I don't want anyone to give up. And I want you just to remember to make voting your lifestyle, to make sure that you you vote in the upcoming primary elections, because As I've said before, the only way to stop people from trying to take away your right to vote is if you get out and vote and let them know that nothing, no obstacle that they put in front of you is going to stop you from voting. Having confidence will provide you with the drive and the ability to work towards your goals without your limiting beliefs standing in your way and I know this is true because no matter what happens no matter how you have to stand no matter how people feel about you and believe me there's a lot of that you have to just keep going even if you have to do it by yourself just keep going okay it's okay just make sure you keep going okay now The first thing we're going to talk about is confidence and self-esteem, okay? This is probably going to be our first podcast. Self-esteem and confidence are often used interchangeably to describe an individual's level of assurance, poise, self-respect, and security. While these two concepts are often related, They are not the same thing. Now, the main difference is that self-esteem is a constant, while confidence is something that fluctuates. And it's vital that you are able to foster a strong sense of both. To do this, you must first understand the origins of both and how each can be affected and changed. Now, what's the difference between confidence and self-esteem? Well, confidence is a huge part of your overall your overall well-being being confident will help you with your career your relationships your self-image your interactions and other aspects of your life people are uncomfortable with confidence but don't let that stop you from being confident it isn't it isn't uncommon for someone to be extremely confident in one area of their life yet insecure in another. And that's true for all of us. Being fully confident and comfortable with yourself in every situation is truly 
invaluable. When you foster a strong sense of self-esteem, it will help you become more confident in all areas of your life. While confidence varies between circumstances, your self-esteem is a continuous part of your self-concept. The higher your self-esteem, the more likely you will be comfortable facing a variety of situations in your life. Self-esteem is an underlying underlying trait that directly affects how you perceive yourself in all circumstances. Self-esteem can be tricky because a lack of self-esteem will manifest in a variety of ways. Generalized self-doubt is one way that low self-esteem can manifest. If you have low self-esteem, you automatically assume that you won't be good at a task and will either give up subconsciously or sabotage yourself until failing. This is your self-concept trying to prove why it has so so, uh, low self-esteem. If you repeatedly fail in a variety of circumstances, your subconscious says, I told you this would happen during every situation that you face. Negative self-talk will rear its ugly head, telling you that you will fail, that you look stupid, you'll embarrass yourself, and that others will harshly judge you. This negative self-talk is not accurate, but instead it originates from low self-esteem. We are social creatures, which gives us the ability to pick up on indicators of high or low self-esteem. It is these indicators that are off, that often affect how we respond to one another. Those who have high self-esteem are more likely to get a job, create social connections, and strike up conversations. It isn't that most people are looking to hurt those with low self-esteem intentionally. It's just a natural tendency for us to be attracted to those who exhibit confidence. We are all self-serving beings, innately trying to get ahead. And when someone eludes confidence, it indicates they can help us get ahead in life. The way in which we present ourselves can be a clear indication to those around us of our levels of confidence and self-esteem. Physical cues like slouching, talking sheepishly, or constant downcast gaze all indicate low self-esteem. During conversations, expressing doubt, frequent verbalization for need for reassurance, or indecisiveness are also clear signs of low self-esteem. It relatively it, it is relatively easy to see these kinds of signs in young children and teenagers. However, many adults have learned to hide their insecurities. Many of us have all adopted the fake it until you make it attitude. Never let them see you sweat. Unfortunately, we are so focused on faking it that we never work towards fixing the underlying issues. Another way in which low self-esteem manifests itself in a confidence contingent outlook. It displays itself when a real person relies entirely on their accomplishments to feed their self. It's, it's, uh, uh, sorry, tongue-tied. To feed their self-esteem. This is far harder to spot in ourselves and other people. This kind of low self-esteem makes us have the need to succeed at everything so that we can feel good about ourselves. There, They may also feel the urge to put others down to feel superior, which feeds their confidence temporarily. The critical factor in these cases is always contingent on outside factors and is always temporary. 
It results in the continuing need to feed self-esteem, to feed the self-esteem monster in an attempt to escape your true feelings. It is a vicious and draining cycle that is incompatible with peace, happiness, and real self-esteem. If you know how to build your confidence in any situation, it will help you to develop your overall self-esteem. Confidence in separate situations is a necessary building block to retrain your mind to think more confidently. As your confidence becomes more natural, self-esteem grows and becomes a part of your self-concept. Thus, developing unwavering self-esteem as well as knowing how to build confidence in specific situations effectively are both essential components for success and well-being. So do you know if you lack confidence and self-esteem? And this is something that we all can need. We can all use. We all need self-esteem. And here are five signs to determine if you need to work on your self-esteem and confidence. And this is something we can all use, you and I. Being indecisive often is a sign that you don't trust yourself to make the right decision. Doubt and insecurities accompany this. If you doubt, you go without. Those who lack self-esteem are frequently riddled with self-doubt. Being indecisive in many situations may indicate low self-esteem, while having it in one or two situations may show a lack of confidence in those particular situations. For example, if you're a new business owner, you may spend more time making decisions that a seasoned business owner, then a seasoned business business owner because you are frequently second guessing yourself. As you learn and develop the appropriate skills, you'll, you'll increase your confidence. Thus knowledge and experience will improve confidence in, idu- in individual situations. Now, self-esteem comes from self-assurance which means that you are confident in all situations and aren't swayed by the opinions of others. One symptom of of low self-esteem is often the frequent fluctuation in your mood based on the actions of others. Oh boy. We do, we do have a tendency. You know, there's so much going on and I think we can't get away like we used to. We're stuck. We're stuck on Zoom calls. Even if we go out, we have to be careful with the variant flying around. We still have to wear our masks and our gloves. Some of us can't get a shot because our health is not well enough. And the people who can get a shot should. Okay. So, we just can't zen anymore like we used to. You have to really, really find your zen in your home. Because this is where we're stuck for a while. And get out as much as you can. As much as you can. Again, if this only happens in a few situations, okay? The fact that your self-esteem goes away when you talk to people, it merely indicates that you may have a lack of confidence in those areas. However, if it is a reoccurring theme across the board, it is an indication that you have low self-esteem. For example, if you always need to be told that you look nice to feel good about your appearance, 
then you likely have low confidence about your self-image. If you also need constant reassurance at work, in relationships, and during social interactions, this likely indicates that you have low self-esteem. Oh. We need to be aware of ourselves now more than ever. Have we fallen off our confidence and self-esteem ladder? I hope not. That's why I started this series. We're going to continue with this series. Um, I'm going to pick up where I left off when I come back. We've, we're gonna. The next thing we're gonna talk about is low self-esteem and the points that we need to look out for. Okay. The next thing we're gonna talk about. We're gonna continue on. Um, with the five signs to determine if you need to work on your self-esteem and confidence. Now this is part one of this series, Confidence and Low Self-Esteem. Okay. Or basically, I think I'm going to call this series Get your mojo back. We need to get our confidence back up after a, a lockdown. I think that I think that's a good title. Get your mojo back. Listen, everybody, this is Donna Miller. I'm with the Vote Voice Podcast. I want to remind you guys, no matter where you're listening to the Vote Voice Podcast. I want to remind you to vote in your primary. I want you to call up your um, your city clerk, go to your secretary of state, find the information, and I want you to find out where your polling place is, make sure you're registered. The primaries here in Michigan are August 3rd. The polls open up at 7 a.m. and close at 8 p.m. And I'm going to tell you, oh, there, there are so many places in Michigan that are having primaries. Please call and double check. Please. Michigan is a big place. There's a lot, a lot of places having a primary. Okay. So I want you to call. And if you want me to list all the places that the Secretary of State has listed as having a primary, leave me a message. Leave me a message and I will list them. Okay? If there's a subject you want me to talk about, you know, as long as I can has to do with voting, you know, something else. I think we need to have a little break in between our, what, fighting voter suppression. Okay, I just think we need a little break. So that's why I'm having this series on Get Your Mojo Back, Finding Your Confidence and Self-Esteem After Lockdown. I think I'll just say finding your confidence after lockdown. Okay. This is Donna Miller. This is the Vote Voice podcast. Follow us on Facebook. Well, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Visit us at www.votevoice.com. Okay. And like I said, just bear with me. I, I, I'm waiting for the... Um, website to to be updated i i created that website myself and um 
a friend is gonna fix it for me and um, you know bring it up to snuff I didn't realize it, it was you know it might not be a the best website going but at the time it was the best website that I could do you would think with Wix would because I have a Wix website and you would think Wix would you know had it perfect but I guess they just give you a little bit and if you not really really computer savvy like me your website isn't going to be that that good but it's it's good it just needs to be better um leave us a message remember to vote and we'll be back for the second part of get your mojo back everybody have a nice day